Starting to crash around us is a new wave of technology. Centered on AI and synthetic biology, this wave is unleashing the power of two universal foundations, a wave of nothing less than intelligence and life itself. I'm Mustafa Suleiman, co-founder of DeepMind and Inflection AI. As an AI entrepreneur, I've devoted my life to building new technology. I've been at the heart of the AI revolution since it felt like a fringe discussion for a small group of researchers almost a decade and a half ago. Now with my book, The Coming Wave, I want to tell the story of technology in the 21st century and begin to suggest how we might be able to make sure this is one that ends well. Here are some of the crucial ideas. It's no exaggeration to say that the coming wave will usher in a new dawn for humanity, creating wealth and surplus unlike anything we've ever seen. These technologies will offer extraordinary new medical advances and clean energy breakthroughs. They'll create not just new businesses, but new industries and quality of life improvements in almost every imaginable area. And yet their rapid proliferation also threatens to empower a diverse array of bad actors to produce disruption, instability, and even catastrophe. This wave creates an immense dilemma that will define the century ahead of us. Our future both depends on these technologies, and yet it is also imperiled by them. For most of history, technology's challenge lay in creating and unleashing its power. With this new wave, that's flipped. The challenge is now about containing technology's unleashed power, ensuring it continues to serve us and our planet. I call this the containment problem, the difficult task of checking a new technology's ripple of unintended consequences. Containment is the overarching ability to monitor, control, and limit technology at any stage of its development or deployment. In some circumstances, containment may even mean stopping a technology from proliferating in the first place. History shows us that this is far from normal. Instead, from the first campfires to the sparks of the internal combustion engine, from the first scrawled letters to the endless text of the internet, technology has an inevitable trajectory. Mass diffusion in great roiling waves. This pattern holds from the earliest flint and bone tools to the latest AI models. People want more, better, easier, cheaper. Costs fall, Capabilities rise, experiment, repeat, use, grow, improve, adapt. Try as we might to resist it, this is the inescapable evolutionary nature of technology. It always spreads far and wide. This is what we can expect in the coming wave. Today, AI is growing in power. Large language models produce text with a coherence that just a few years ago would have seemed incredible. AI can write code, generate stunning images, and compose music. It's managing our traffic, running our warehouses, and diagnosing rare conditions. In just a few years, AI models have gone from hundreds of millions to trillions of parameters, even as they have become smaller and more efficient. Large language models are the fastest diffusing consumer technology we have ever seen. AI is moving more quickly than even industry experts can track or predict. Now, this exponential change is expanding to biotech, robotics, quantum computing, and even new energy sources. The cost of sequencing DNA, for example, has collapsed. We now have a growing ability to synthesize it, to write the code of life and create completely new organic life forms. This wave is driven by deep incentives. Led by the US and China, a geopolitical race for dominance is already underway. AI and synthetic biology will likewise create a massive economic boom, a tempting prize for those that create and wield them. They are part of a distributed system of research, spurring on their development, and they will help address pressing global challenges. This is why the coming wave really is coming. 
but this wave is also different from those of the past. These tools are marked by four key features, making their containment especially hard. First, they evolve dizzyingly fast. Second, they enable massively asymmetric impacts. Third, they are inherently general, working across every area of society. And fourth, they are starting to display signs of autonomy. Each exacerbates the challenge of controlling them. Collectively, these technologies offer a step change in human potential. If the internet gave everyone the ability to broadcast, the new wave gives people the ability to do things on an unprecedented scale. As a result, these technologies deliver nothing less than a radical proliferation of power. We are not prepared. It's no secret these technologies give bad actors a new toolkit, spur on a surge of misinformation and take away jobs. While they deliver immense benefits, they will also amplify societal fragility. They could even present an existential threat to the nation state, introducing risks so profound they may even disrupt or overturn the current political order. At the same time, they open pathways to AI-empowered cyber attacks, automated wars that could devastate countries, engineered pandemics, and a world at the mercy of unexplainable and yet seemingly omnipotent forces. The likelihood of each may be small, but the possible consequences are huge. Even a slim chance of outcomes like these requires serious attention. Presented with scenarios like this, people often have a natural pessimism aversion, a tendency to dismiss such assessments as overblown scaremongering. But this is the reality of what's coming. Faced with it, we're seemingly left with two unwelcome endpoints. On the one hand, a surveillance state, stamping out any risk at the expense of freedoms and progress. On the other, an eventual catastrophe born of runaway development. This is the dilemma at the heart of the 21st century. Can the world find a narrow path between these two outcomes? Can we strike a balance between openness and closure? Doing so is an urgent generational challenge on par with the climate crisis. So where to start? From where I'm standing, I think we need a containment program working in 10 concentric layers. It starts close in with technological specifics and moves out from there to the level of international movements. This is not a complete picture, a ready-made answer, but an outline sketch to prompt further discussion. These steps are the following. 1. Technical safety measures built into the tools themselves, concrete means to ensure safe outcomes. 2. Audit mechanisms that ensure a technology's transparency and accountability. 3. If necessary, we should use choke points on the whole ecosystem to buy time for regulators and defensive technologies. Production of advanced chips, for example, is concentrated in a single Taiwanese factory which gives us more power to restrict it if needed. Four, who builds technology matters. We need responsible, committed makers. Technology's biggest critics invested in actually making contained technology, not just looking in from the outside. Five, at the company level, having the right incentives in place is tricky. But going beyond a heedless commercial race Shaping those corporate structures to deliver contained technology is nonetheless vital. Six, regulation is absolutely essential. Governments will have to license these technologies, getting involved at every stage of their creation and deployment. Seven, international treaties, up to and including new global institutions, mediating between national governments are another must have. Eight, we need to cultivate the right culture around technology, making the precautionary principle an ingrained part of the whole ecosystem, not an optional add-on. Nine, social movements have always been part of widespread change. Now, once again, 
everyone can play a part in pushing for the future we want, building a broad coalition for a better technology. 10. Lastly, all these measures need to cohere, adding up to a comprehensive, integrated program. None of this will be easy, but do so and we forge a narrow path to a secure and flourishing human future. What would have once been centuries or millennia of technological change is now happening in a matter of years or even months. Consequences ricochet around the world in hours or seconds. Think of containment then as a set of interlinked and mutually reinforcing mechanisms for maintaining human and societal control of technology during this time of exponential change. Without containment, every other aspect of technology, every discussion of its ethical shortcomings or the benefits it could bring is inconsequential. We urgently need watertight answers for how the coming wave can be controlled and contained, for how the safeguards of the democratic nation state can be saved. Answers I believe that no one yet has. We can already see the wave emerging. Look at the history of technology, look at the raw power of the coming wave, and containment appears impossible. But follow the implications, and something else becomes equally clear. For all our sakes, containment must be possible.